we've now made our way through the beautiful Ozarks just outside of uh, Branson, and we're here at Silver Dollar City with a, a longtime friend of mine, Brad Thomas, who is the president of Silver Dollar City Attractions. Brad, hey, it's good to see you as always. Good morning. Hey, the last time I saw you was here in Branson last fall. We enjoyed the premiere of uh, the Million Dollar Quartet that was uh, first time on stage, and we saw it together. We did, absolutely. That joins a host of incredible shows throughout all of Branson. And I, I have to ask this, have you seen Moses yet? I'm seeing it this afternoon. Okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll not do any spoiler for you, but it is an incredible story about this man who um, God used despite his reluctance and despite his weaknesses, and guess what? You have reluctances, <laughs> you have weaknesses, and God still, you, still uses you and me. Uh, and and yes. the, the, just the incredible production that Sight and Sound gives to that story and the way they make that epic story come to life right here in Branson, Missouri, it's worth the trip. Wherever you are, it is worth the trip to come to Branson for Sight and Sounds, Moses. T totally, Brad. I said Sight and Sound does a great job. Matter of fact, I got to see the premiere of Samson up in Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania. and that's coming, I think, later uh, next year. That'll be coming to Branson. And probably a couple of years. A couple of years, okay. But, uh, hey, we're here to talk about the attractions and what's happening at Silver Dollar City. Before we do, going back to that night when we were at the uh, Million Dollar Quartet production, uh, there was something that was said in the production. You asked me a question afterwards, knowing that I'm from Memphis, uh, whether or not something that uh, Sam Phillips said was actually true on stage regarding, uh, I think, his stock in Holiday Inn. Do you remember that? I do remember okay. that. Okay. Well, shortly after that, I was in a phone conversation with Kimmons Wilson Jr., who is the son of Kimmons Wilson, who started Holiday Inns. And so uh, Kim is, lives in Memphis, a great brother in Christ. And uh, I just asked him, I said, hey, Kim, tell me about this conversation in the Million Dollar Quartet, which he's seen, loves the show. And uh, I said, is that true? And he said, absolutely, that's true. Dad had stock in uh, Holiday Inn. But I'll tell me, tell me further the story. He said, uh, it, it goes back one early morning, about 2 o'clock, the phone rang. Woke my dad up. It was Sam Phillips. And uh, he said, Sam, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. Why are you calling me now? And he said, I've got to talk to you, Cam. I've got to talk to you. I've got something that's on that I don't know what to do. I need some help making a decision. And uh, RCA wants to buy Elvis's contract. I don't know what to do. I'm just doing Can I talk to you about it? And he said, well, come on over here to the house. They got together at uh, early morning, probably 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. And uh, they had this conversation. And he said they want to buy Elvis's, you know, contract. I think for $30,000 was the amount. And he said, uh, what do you think? He said, well, Sam, you, I don't think this boy's going to go anywhere. <laughs> and my advice is to go ahead and sell the contract. And so uh, that was it's kind of a joke, you know. They remain great friends, you know, to the end. But uh, matter of fact, there was a roast later on, and later on, uh, for uh, for Kimmons, and that Sam got up and laughed about that night. You just <laughs> never know how God's <laughs> going to use anyone. You never know, and I, I really appreciate you, you sharing that and just being on the property in just the last few moments. Brad, there's one employee that has been a long time employee, uh, D. A. Calloway, and uh, D. A. has uh, oversees the uh, the shows. The the uh, the bands when it comes to bluegrass or gospel, I mean, he kind of is the filter for all the musicians that play here at Silver Dollar City. He brings all those great Southern gospel artists during our Southern gospel picnic. Top names, he, DA's the one that goes out, finds them, brings them right here to Silver Dollar City, and has created an incredible, an incredible event. Well, I just wanted to, to pin off on something that just happened just a few moments ago before you walked into this ice cream parlor where we're actually doing our uh, program right now. Uh, DA walked up. I saw him through the window here, and I had to go say hi to him and went out there, and we took a selfie together, just enjoyed, you know, a little fellowship. And uh, some man and his family walked up, and uh, he said, hey, I'm, I'm trying to find out where are the rides, where can I find this and that. And D.A. just stopped when he said, excuse me, Byron, and he went and took care of them, and he said he walked them to where the maps were so they could find where they needed to go. And I'll tell you what, that really speaks to me of what I think is a principle that is shared here among the staff, and that is servant leadership. 
You know, we have incredible owners. Silver Dollar City has been in business since May 1st, 1960. The Hershen family founded the company, and the Hershen family still owns the company. And uh, we have an incredible future ahead because the new generations of Hershens still love the culture. They still love our employees. They still love that um, nurturing, that servant leadership kind of approach. And just as the founders did back in the early 60s, we're encouraged to to ensure that we as leaders are um, in using servant leadership in all that we do. And that's something that really has to start from the top up, doesn't it, Brad? You know, I think it is, it, it's one of those challenges because no place is perfect. As, as passionate as we are about serving the visitors that come to this place, um, we're not perfect, and we know that. But we try to tra- take corrective action when we do find our faults. But it is, it is important that the top understand, but that the top lives and breathes that type of a culture. In other words, if um, we had people any, in, in any group of this organization that didn't understand that they are here to be um, um, servant leaders, then guess what? this isn't the place for them and we're, right. we, we will falter. So it, the whole organization from corner to corner to corner to corner has to live and breathe taking care of our guests and also taking care of each other. And the greatest example of servant leadership you and I both know is Jesus Christ. And this, this principle we're talking about is who you follow. I mean, that is that is pretty much the standard of this leadership we're talking about is following Jesus Christ. We have a mission statement, as most corporations do, and it starts out with what we, who we are and what we want to do. And we want to bring families closer together. We choose to create memories worth repeating. And then we have our core values beyond that. And at the very bottom of that statement, we say all in a manner consistent with Christian values and ethics. Some would look at that and say, boy, um, does that mean that everybody who works within your company are Christians? And it's like, no, they don't. Uh, Does everyone who visit your um, your properties are they Christians it's like no they're not they come from all economic classes and they come from all faiths but here's what we know Jesus Christ walked this earth and he treated people in a certain way and we respect those values and whether you believe in the deity of Jesus which we happen to believe but whether you believe in the deity of Jesus or not just to look at how he treated others, that's how we want to model that behavior. And so that's what we say of our guests and of our employees. You may be a believer, you may not be a believer, but here's how you need to behave when you're working here or when you visit here. What are some of the challenges, Brad, for you as the president of Silver Dollar City Attractions to be able to help maintain? How do you continue to instill those principles, you know, just through, through weekly and daily, you know, life here at Silver Dollar City and all the other attractions that you oversee? You know, it is so critically important that we, ha- we find people and that we encourage an environment that... that understands love of each other others first and if someone doesn't get that then that's a problem if they're um, they want to um, enhance themselves by putting others down that's a problem they're not going to serve our guests well and they're not going to serve their fellow employees well and so it's just critically important that we have we people who in their DNA they love other people. Yeah. That's how we find um, um, people who have this willingness to serve each other. You know, uh, um, a few years ago, um, one of our owners recognized the fact that we as a company give a lot of money to, to ministries and charities, but there are times when we have employees who have financial challenges. What do we do? How do we handle that when a tragic fire has wiped everything out or a tragic health event has put an incredible um, um, strain on that, that household? And so he challenged us to figure out a way to create some kind of um, foundation 
that would take care of our internal employees. And we created a, 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 a organization called Share It Forward, and it allows us to um, contribute to a fund that helps our fellow employees. So all of us have the opportunity to contribute right out of our paycheck yeah. to this fund. It is matched wholly by the company. So every dollar that I put in is matched by the company. And the Hershen family matches a formula of that as well. So for every dollar I put in, it instantly becomes $2. And then there is a match from the Hershen family as well. Because of that, we are able to help our employees. And it's fascinating to look that um, almost 70% of our employees give to that fund so that they can help each other. That's called servant leadership. <laughs> yeah. It's also you're creating a culture of leadership and allowing each other to carry each other's burdens. Right. Because once we really do that, you know, we can become that that unit and we can become there's that there's that family that just kind of rises to the occasion. Right. And so now when a crisis happens, we have a function in place. And what's interesting, it's, I'll tell you, I can tell you more than you want to know for, for time's sake today, but basically the employees will fill out an application. That application becomes blind. So the, the committee of employees basically chooses, um, based on the criteria of that application, with no name attached to that application, they approve or they disapprove um, that, that grant. And it's given to that employee, and we're, we're incredibly proud of that organization. Wow, what a great, great work. And, and I know that that model, uh, as you mentioned, is, of course, through all the properties. And there's quite a bit with the Hershen Family Entertainment, and in addition with Silver Dollar City Attractions, you know, that that is the model for the entire corporation that is handled. But uh, you guys are always uh, looking for new ways to, as you mentioned, bring families together. Uh, looking for innovative ways that are fun, that are attractions, that are thrills, that are exciting. I mean, you have got some of the, the best uh, rides, you know, that you'll find anywhere in America or in the world or right here. Outlaw Run, uh, you know, is an incredible coaster. The uh, steel topper wood track that actually goes upside down. Matter of fact, understand this morning you have a group from, is it Australia? or from England, I believe, that are here. It's a group of thrill riders. We have several coaster clubs that are visiting us in the coming weeks from literally all over the world. And um, those coaster groups come here because of our interesting mix of coasters. Outlaw Run, of course, is at the top. It's the first of its class of wood coaster. When it opened, it was the second fastest wood coaster ever constructed. It's the only wood coaster that takes you upside down um, three <laughs> times. And at the, the day that it opened, it was the steepest wood coaster ever constructed, and that's in the 2015 Book of Guinness uh, Book of Records. So Allo Run is a blast, and I'll, I'll give you this little tease. In the daytime, it's fun. At nighttime, the only thing we illuminate is the lift. <laughs> And so once you get to the top of that lift, everything else is dark. So going upside down three times, doing all of those things, <laughs> it's like you do it in the dark. So it's a blast at night. That's probably the time that I need to try to ride that is at nighttime. So I don't see those falls, you know, just kind of happen as they come. <laughs> and then, Byron, last year we opened Fireman's Landing, which is an entire um, new area with 10 attractions for families of all ages. There are things for the smallest of children, but there are also some thrill factors in there. And we love telling the story about America's firefighters that are all across this country. 70% of the firefighters in this nation do not receive any pay whatsoever. Volunteer firefighters fueled the development of this nation yeah. and continue to operate. And we love telling that story. Outlaw Run, we told the story about lawmen and we celebrate lawmen. And down as you enter into that ride corridor, you'll notice a monument, a 25-foot tall monument dedicated to law enforcement. We love aspiring kids, inspiring kids, to aspire to be the good guys. In this crazy world in which we're living, we want to celebrate the heroes, whether that's the firefighters, whether that's the police officers, whomever that may be, we want the kids to aspire to be the good guys. And hopefully through some of those stories, maybe mom and dad will be impacted too, that their lives yes. will be positively impacted. You know, another aspect I know that uh, I really appreciate about uh, 
the, the operation here is the diversity. And that's been, could be no more proven than when you incorporated the Harlem Globetrotters into your corporation. Uh, an organization who is soon to be celebrating 90 years of, uh, you know, a family entertainment, of really uh, growing up in a time, starting at a time when, you know, racial diversity was not even an issue. You know, there was the segregation. They have been a unit, I think, that has really tried to bridge, that has bridged that gap, really, over the years. And uh, happy to say that uh, they're part of your organization now. Harlem Globetrotters joined us um, uh, two or three years ago as a part of our company. And uh, last year, we were very proud to debut the Harlem Globetrotters at Silver Dollar City for six weeks in the summer. They will join us this summer through the middle of July. And their fun approach to basketball, it just it, it, our, our fans, our guests love the Harlem Globetrotters. Uh, these are men and women who have a passion for the sport, but they're also men and women who appreciate good, clean family entertainment. And uh, we, we love having the Harlem Globetrotters here and uh, are looking forward to having them uh, this summer and watching our guests have a blast with them. Yeah, and of course, that'll be this summer that our listeners can come by up until the middle of July and enjoy. I've seen the show. We were here last last summer and got a chance to interview the Globetrotters, saw their show. I mean, they just interact with the audience so well. As you, If you've never been, you've got to come and enjoy. I mean, they're, they're an entertaining group. They're a fun group, and you need to see the Harlem Globetrotters here at Silver Dollar City. Uh, something else uh, is the magic of Peter uh, Gossamer. And uh, this is, is this a new show? Peter Gossamer uh, um, has been with us several years ago. Um, but Peter Gossamer is um, a, uh, a, a gentleman who is talented in his craft of uh, illusion, but he also um, loves clean family entertainment. And so we're glad to have Peter Gossamer here. And then as we move on toward um, the, the heart of the summer, uh, once we get past Star Spangled Summer in the middle of July, we head into Moonlight Madness for two and a half weeks. That's where the city is open every night until 10 o'clock. So the rides at Silver Dollar City in the daytime are fun. The rides at Silver Dollar City <laughs> at nighttime are even more fun. A lot of families will come in. They'll enjoy Silver Dollar City when we open in the morning, may take the kids home, take a little nap, maybe jump in the swimming pool, get dressed, come back to the city, and enjoy Silver Dollar City at night. And on select evenings during the summer, we're even open until midnight. Yeah. So, uh, and, we, you know, a lot of parks around the country will be open till midnight. At Silver Dollar City, what we have till midnight are families with strollers and uh, people visiting this place as a family unit and enjoying those rides until midnight it's not a teenage hangout this is a place where mom and dad or grandma and grandpa bring the kids and they all come together and they eat their meals together and then they go off and do the the <laughs> things as they want to to enjoy and uh, I, I nothing makes my heart happier than to walk through the streets at nine o'clock at night or 10 o'clock at night or 11 o'clock at night and see a family unit having great family experiences because then it goes back to our our vision of bringing families closer together. Brent, talk about how you guys are, you care about the little things. I mean, and when it comes, when families walk in here and when it comes even to the food, for example, I mean, when you uh, created the, the right outlaw run, there was an ice cream that was created for Outlaw Run, that's one of my favorites, by the way. Uh, I mean, even in the candy shop, I mean, there's some unique things that are done in the way you create, and whether the culinary craft area too. I mean, there's there's things that you do that are, that are unique here that make their experience for whoever walks in just that much more fun. Well, you use the word experience, and that's the word that we use a lot. We we want to create a positive experience when the family visits us when they first come through that entrance, whether it's an adult couple visiting without children or it's an entire family unit unit visiting with with children we want to create an experience that takes them away from the craziness of their lives we know that this is a crazy world that families have burdens that couples have burdens that there are just things that are bringing them down whether it's fears for their own economic stability or it's health concerns or it's it, it's relationship issues families that visit us 
have challenges, and we know that. Everybody does. And what we want to do is to help them have a day that helps them escape those challenges, to forget that. Whatever their burdens are, they can have a day together that hopefully brings them closer together. And so uh, through that experience, we look at the sights, we look at the sounds, we look at the colors, we look at the overall experience and we want to, um, if we're incorporating something new, we want to create that full experience. So we want to tell a story. We love, love, love incorporating food, even with our rides. Like you, you talked about Outlaw Run, um, ice cream, which is actually sold in, in um, supermarkets throughout the middle of the country. Uh, there's a local dairy called Highland that um, helped us create that ice cream. And, um, and that just kind of enhances that overall experience. And I won't get into the whole storyline, but even to the sea salted <laughs> caramel inside that ice cream, it tells a story about Outlaw Run. And um, then as we look at our festivals, we're always looking at how we incorporate food into those festivals. Our, our May event called Bluegrass and Barbecue um, takes bl the heart of bluegrass, which is an up-and-coming genre. It's not an old and dying no. genre. It's an up-and-coming yes. genre with lots of young, talented musicians. And then we take barbecue and incorporate in that. Our Southern Gospel Picnic in the, uh, at the end of the summer, we do what so many good Southern Gospel fans do. We serve fried chicken like crazy. <laughs> and, and, and it's all part of that overall experience that helps families relate to maybe a time in their past or maybe something that they haven't experienced at all. Well, we know days here in the summer in Branson or anywhere in the south, the, mid, the Midwest, in this area, you can get some really hot temperatures and a great place to cool off is at Whitewater, another attraction that uh, you oversee. We uh, have a water park right on Highway 76 in Branson called Whitewater. Uh, the park is an island escape. So as you walk through the gates, you'll notice a, a Hawaiian theme emerge. We have palm trees around. We have tropical plants around. We have a, a lazy river that you can relax. But we also have incredible slides. The, the high power Kalani Towers that's right on 76 that you'll see is um, eight plus stories of just family fun, racing slides, speed slides but then we also opened a couple of years ago a slide called kapow plummet you'll get to the top of that tower and you'll stand kind of like a mummy with your hands on your chest and you'll hear this audible voice go three two one the floor drops and you are down that slide <laughs> and um, it, it'll take oh your my. breath away have you done that Brad? i have, have absolutely you? oh my goodness oh my goodness <laughs> yes yes you have to huh i do i do <laughs> it's part of the job Oh, uh, it's a, I've watched the video and it, it looks incredible. I mean, but you actually, I mean, it's a free fall for how how long? Do you know? Oh, it, it's thousands of feet. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it is about um, the slide is a relatively quick slide, but it's that fleeting moment yeah. when you, you know, you know, you know that that floor is getting ready to drop and you hear that voice, three, two, one, and then you are gone. And it and what, what's even more fun is when you're waiting for your your. Um, time to slide and you're watching other guests yeah, and yeah. their expressions as yeah. the floor drops and the blood drains from their face oh my goodness it's fun oh it does sound so much fun okay now when we talk about water we talk about the beautiful ozark mountains there's one of the most beautiful lakes in america is table rock lake and one of the f greatest features on that lake is the branson uh showboat showboat branson bell and uh, i know that attraction is is just an incredible relaxing dinner cruise on a beautiful beautiful lake uh day cruises night cruises uh but there's something else that's coming kind of new that you do this summer for families and it's called the princes and pirates cruises on the showboat branson bell yes you know um i don't know if you know this little bit of missouri history but uh, the white river used to run just two minutes south of where silver dollar city is today and pre-1920, you could get on the White River, as river traders did, and you would float in and out of Missouri and Arkansas and right on down to Memphis, get on the Mississippi, and float on down to um, New Orleans if you chose to do that. I did not realize that. Absolutely. And so Table Rock Lake is basically is the White River and that it was created 
by a dam um, that was um, constructed uh, in the late 50s. Um, Table Rock Lake was formed in 59 to 60, and uh, that has hundreds of miles, a beautiful, beautiful shoreline in and out of Arkansas. And um, you, you see the Ozark Mountains. Showboat Branson Bell is a football field long, and the experiences on that vessel, there are all kinds of shows. We do a, a Christmas cruise um, on Sundays where we have carols and, and we have special Christmas productions on the, uh, on the vessel. In the summer, it, we have three shows. We have um, uh, the main evening show, and then we have a lunch show. And then on Sundays, for nine Sundays in the summer, we have the Princess and Pirate Cruise. And it's all about little kids dressing up as princesses and pirates and joining big princesses and pirates. <laughs> uh, we have a host of a couple of dozen princes and pirates who um, greet the children. And w last year was our first attempt at this. The cruise is sold out immediately. Children show up. They are dressed up. These little girls dressed as princesses. <laughs> these little guys dressed as pirates. They get to this vessel, football field long, they look at it, and their eyes are just huge. This is the biggest moment of their life so far. And they get on that vessel, and they realize that that cruise is all for them. So the meal is centered around what kids like to eat and uh, the, the show and the music. And then they get to go up on the top deck and have a little bit of a, a dance party with the princesses and pirates. And it's just a lot of fun um, where kids get to live out a fantasy, but mom and dad have a blast. I, I saw grandmas with tears in their eyes as they saw their little princess um, meet big princesses, and um, it's just some really special moments. Well, you know, I'm a poppy now, and, and my wife's a Mimi, and we have a three-year-old granddaughter, and when I heard this, we've got to make plans to you come do. back just you for do. that. It sounds like a wonderful time. Byron, your eyes will water because it's just, <laughs> they're just, it's just something about those three, four, five, six, seven-year-old kids experiencing something that they never thought would be possible and it's it's bigger than life well that's what again it goes back to caring about people caring about families innov innovative ways to bring families together and have fun doing it and that's what silver dollar city attractions is all about all of the Hershey family entertainment is all about and our friends can get more details about this wonderful uh, attraction here by going to silverdollarcity.com silverdollarcity.com for the website uh, you can actually pre-order your tickets. And let me also encourage our friends, too, that are coming to consider uh, season passes because that is a great value. Byron, season passes are always the best value um, for less than the price of two days at Silver Dollar City. You get a season pass. You can visit every day we're open for the entire season. And, our, you know, we've talked about summer, but we go into fall and we have this incredible harvest festival with a cowboy theme craftsmen gather from all over the nation and then our christmas is world class it is my it, favorite time of the year to be here five million lights um incredible living nativity production a show with that tells the story of dickens christmas carol a show that tells the story of it's a wonderful life and each of those with deep meanings you can't watch Ebenezer Scrooge no. and not have not reflect on how you're living your life. You can't watch It's a Wonderful Life and not reflect how you're living your life. So you may enjoy the music and you may enjoy the script, <laughs> but somehow I think even the hardest of hearts have to put them their lives in front of a mirror and say, How am I treating others? That's right. How am I what am I doing? And with my place on this earth. Well, and that helps put things in perspective for me. I have always say that my Christmas really gets in perspective when I'm here to see Dickens. It's a wonderful life. It always does it for me, and it's a joy, and I love coming. And our friends at Bot Radio need to be here too. Any time of the year is a great time to be at Silver Dollar City. Byron, this I'll tell your wife. Um, those ghosts of Christmas present and past and future can do home visits if she ever needs one to come visit you. Just know that, okay? <laughs> she will probably call you sometime, Brad. I'm, I'm sure she will now that she knows that. <laughs> Brad Thomas, God bless you, my dear brother in Christ, and thank you so much for what you do, really, for Christ's kingdom, for families here at Silver Dollar City. It has been our privilege to have you here on Bot Radio Network. Byron, I just have to say this. Thank you for telling the stories of so many great 
organizations and so many great people through Bot Radio because I, you know, God gave us an incredible Bible that allows us to know his word. But now it's our challenge to go live that. And nothing inspires people to do better than to hear other stories. And so I appreciate what Bot Radio does in the ministry, balancing God's word with the story of his people. So thank you. God bless you. Friends, that's all the time we have on this edition of Mid-South Viewpoint. I'm Byron Tyler. Thanks for stopping by as we're here at Silver Dollar City. Wonderful place to be. Don't forget to go to the website, silverdollarcity.com. That's silverdollarcity.com. That's all the time we have. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.